Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about my Stia recipe. I know a lot of people have been asking, Carol, what recipe do you use in Stia? And on top of that, where do you farm for all the materials you use, especially Stia crisp meat? But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. All right, so the very first thing I want to show off is, of course, the recipe itself. When we go to cook quick food on our Ryukur device, you can create from my recipes. Over here, you can actually create your own recipe simply by clicking on add new, and then you can mix and match your own recipes. You know, I sort things out by region, so I'll just put stia, and all the different ingredients that you can collect in stia will automatically pop up. However, as you can see here, this is the recipe that I personally use. It's one crisp stia cauliflower, one crisp stia mango, one rich stia hermit crab, three rich stia meat, as well as four crisp stia meat. This is the recipe that I use, and the buffs that I gain from this recipe is potency plus 9.2%, damage resistance plus 5%, HP plus 5%, and photon power plus 10. As for the region match effect, I gain potency to weak point plus 3%, as well as PP consumption minus 5%. So I'm gonna go over where to find all of these ingredients, starting with the cauliflower. So in order to get the crisp cauliflower, we are gonna need to teleport up here to Altaria base, all right? Now, once you arrive at Altaria base, it's literally right in front of you. There's just gonna be a bunch of crisp cauliflower right here. You're simply just gonna follow the line and pick up all of your crisp cauliflower right here. Super duper easy. It's very easy to just pick this up every single day and very difficult to miss. And there's also a bunch of other fruits over here. There is a bunch of bananas that you can pick up. And there's also some seafood over here. Uh, I don't know if it spawned yet. There it is, it did spawn. So we pick up some of that seafood as well, those robust stia turban shells. Unfortunately, I don't use any of these in my recipe, but you know, you could always use them as substitute instead if you don't want to use the ingredients that I'm using. Now with the cauliflower out of the way, the next ingredient is the crisp stia mangoes. The crisp mangoes are very, very easy to find. You literally teleport to the entrance of stia and right at the beach area, there's going to be a bunch of mango trees. So we're simply just going to go there right now. And once you teleport over, you can see there are some trees on my left as well as on my right. So we're just gonna go to the right first because why not and you're just gonna collect all of these mangoes from the trees You boop you see crisp mangoes crisp mangoes more crisp mangoes And there's a whole bunch of trees over here So you're just gonna collect all of the mangoes from the trees super duper easy now after you've collected all of the crisp mangoes, the next ingredient is gonna be the rich crabs. The rich crabs are in the little island next to this cocoon over here. You can teleport to the cocoon directly if you want. So over here, I'm just gonna teleport straight to the cocoon. Once you're at the cocoon over here, you're simply gonna go to the task and quest over here, go to quest information and abandon quest, and it will immediately kick you out of the tower. So uh, you basically use this tower as a Ryukur device. So now you're teleported right here. You're simply gonna run towards the beach, so when we run forward over here and right at the coastline, you're going to see there are a bunch of crabs over here. So let's pick them up. All these beautiful hermit crabs. Delicious. All right, with three of the five ingredients out of the way, the last two ingredients is the rich stia meat as well as the crisp stia meat. So you can obtain rich stia meat simply in the stia outskirts over here. So in the beach area over here, there's a bunch of tames. You can simply just kill them all and you will obtain rich stia meat. However, if you want to obtain crisp stia meat, you're going to need to teleport to Mediola outer area one. So we're going to teleport up here to the ridge number two. And once you're over here, instead of running forward to go fight the gigantics, you're simply going to turn to the left or turn to the right and you're gonna run clockwise. So I'm gonna open up my map, I'm gonna zoom in over here. So you can see that this is literally a circle behind us. There's gonna be crisp meat over here, there's crisp meat over here, crisp meat here, and there's also crisp meat over here where the uh, famous mushrooms are. So basically there's gonna be two spots of mobs that spawn over here and two spots of mobs that spawn over here. You're just gonna continuously kill them over and over and over. I do recommend doing this in a group or at least with like two or three people. It will make the process a lot easier if you have at least two people People. That way you have one person handling these two spawn points while another person handling these two spawn points and it'll just make your life a lot easier. Or even better if you have four people, one person just camps at each spawn site and you can kill these mobs and they respawn very, very quickly. However, if you don't have any friends, don't worry, this is soloable. You can just simply just run in a circle clockwise or anti-clockwise, however you want to do it. And you can just keep killing the mobs until the tames that drop Chris meat actually spawn. Now these tames are a little bit uncommon, but you'll get a ton of meat if you farm here for like 30 minutes, okay? So I'm just gonna show you what the teams look like.
like by simply showcasing how the run actually looks. So I like to do mine counterclockwise. I don't know, ask me why, I just like to do it counterclockwise. So I'm just gonna come over here. So this is the first spawn point right here. You can see that there are no tames yet because of probably someone killed it. It's not a big deal. We're simply just gonna move over to the next point. Remember, it's just a gigantic circle. So we're just gonna move over to the next spawn point over here. We're gonna float right here. And uh, nope, nothing has spawned here either. Oh, something is spawned over here. Unfortunately, they are not um, tames. They're actually just regular mobs. And that will happen. You will get regular mobs pretty often and you just kill them instead. Because uh, if you don't kill them, well, the tames won't respawn or, you know, mobs won't respawn. So you do need to kill them and take them out. All right, so there's nothing in this camp. Let's go to the next camp over here. Again, these are not the tames that we need. These aren't even tames at all, they're just dolls. So we need to slaughter them, get them out of the way. I leveled up somehow, interesting. And then we move on to the next spot. So you're literally just running in a gigantic circle around this pillar. So you can see over here, this is where the purple trigger is. Now there's usually tames that spawn here sometimes as well but there's nothing here. Oh, look at that. Over there, we can see tames. I'm just looking at my radar and I can see if it's a tame or a regular doll. Tames are a little bit on the dull color. It's like a, it's like a dark yellow. And uh, these are not the tames that we want. As you can see, these are just the flame sunnies. So uh, we're just gonna, uh, you know, get them out of the way. Now these drop the robust meat. So uh, again, not really the meat we want. So we're gonna move over here. And look, there's even more tames again. These are the Comantas. Um, again, nothing we want over here. They drop the rich meat though, so that is useful for the, our recipe. But again, not the crisp. So we're just gonna continue on with our circle. We're just gonna keep walking around until we find the right spawn. And we're just gonna keep killing things over and over and over. This is why it makes it a lot easier if you have multiple people, then you don't need to run in this gigantic circle like how I'm doing, you know, constantly. You could just have one person handle the bottom spawn and the another person handle the top spawns. So you don't need to move as much. However, it's perfectly doable with uh, one person or solo. And after running around this place four to five laps, I finally found the one that you want to kill. And these are the Flam Vox over here. These little wolves over here, these are the teams that will drop the crisp cavalry meat. So you can see over here there's always four of them and uh, I don't know where the fourth one went. Oh here he is. Oh there's actually more than four this time actually so there's like seven of them which is actually pretty nice but uh, we're just gonna take them all out over here and uh, you gotta take them out fast or else they do run away so you don't want that to happen because uh, well if you run away like that you're gonna lose the uh, the crisp meat. So there we go we took them all out and let's take a quick look at how much crisp meat we just got there. So we're gonna do crisp and scroll all the way to the bottom. And there you go, crisp stia meat. We have 16 of them now. So it is a little bit tedious as you do need to run around this place quite a lot. However, again, I wanna stress if you have multiple people, it's gonna be a lot easier to farm this because then I can just stand at this one spot, have a rod and just zap everything to death over and over as everything respawns really, really quickly. But with that said, I just wanna remind everyone that you can still use your Ritem as well as your Kavaris recipes if you want to and still gain the region match effect. All you need to do is go to the corresponding area, eat the food buff there, and then come back to Stia, and you will carry over the region match effect that you picked up back in Kavaris, for example. So in my case, I have a lot of materials from Ritem. As you can see over here, I've got a bunch of crisp Ritem meat, as well as rich Ritem meat. So I can always go to Ritem, eat this food buff, and then come back to Stia, and I will still have this potency to weak point plus 3%, as well as this PP consumption minus 5%. The reason I can say that is because I made all three of these recipes, and they have the exact same ingredients, which gives me all of these stat boosts. So in conclusion, if you want to use my Stia recipe, by all means, go ahead and use it. However, if you have a lot of ingredients from the Kavaris region or from the Ritem region, you can also use those ingredients first. The only catch is you have to teleport back to Kavaris or teleport back to Ritem to eat your food buff there and then come back to Stia and you will carry over the region matching buff. However, if you're super lazy like myself and you'd rather just collect all your Stia stuff because you don't want to go anywhere else and you just want to stay in Stia, then you can use my recipe. The only downside is getting crisp stia meat is a little bit challenging as you do need to farm in circles and the tame is a rare spawn there. Well, it's not exactly rare, it's just uncommon. So it will take quite a few laps before you actually see it. Unless you have multiple people farming, maybe one person camps each spawn point, then you can accelerate the process significantly. 
Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye. What can I say except you're welcome for the heals, the boosts, the rest.